Hello and welcome back to part two of how to draw a basic human portrait. I am Adam O and today we are going to be finishing this whole thing. We're going to do something that I've never done before and I don't think a lot of artists do. We're going to point out what's wrong with this drawing at the end and then we're going to kind of talk about how we can fix those things. Um, one of the things that you'll need to keep in mind is this is a like five to seven hour drawing. It was very quick. Uh, I was just knocking it out just to just, just get it done. Um, and it was one of the things I just did for myself. It was in between commissions. So there are definitely going to be things that are wrong with this. And um, so I won't be showing you how to fix them, but I'll be talking about how we fix them. Um, and I may do that as they come up. Let's get into the video though. So to start out with, I'm going to take, I'm going to start working on his skin. So I'm going to take a paintbrush and some charcoal powder, and I'm just going to kind of dab around in the darkest parts of the shadows on his head. Now this is going to look really, really dark when I first put it on, but charcoal powder, the more you brush it, the lighter it gets. So it'll look almost black right now, especially compared to his hair. But whenever I start fanning this out and I start brushing this across the forehead, it'll get lighter and lighter. Now one of the other things that I try to do here is I, I think I put a little bit where the light glances off the right side of his head, our right. Um, and I do that because I can erase away or lift off the charcoal in order to create those highlights. So I'm just going to start dabbing this in. I'm kind of doing it Bob Ross style where I kind of push the paintbrush into the paper and I'm kind of using circle, circular motions so that we don't have uh, like paintbrush stroke marks. I need it to be smooth and even. And if I start brushing up and down or side to side, uh, it'll, it'll leave brush marks that take a little bit to, to actually get out of there. Now, if you don't have... Um, charcoal powder. I mention this every time I use it, but you can use just regular everyday extra soft charcoal. So right under the bill of my hat there, you can see that big black blob there. That's extra soft charcoal that I have scribbled into scrap paper. Then what you can do is rub a Q-tip in that and get that saturated and then just use that in place of charcoal powder. It just takes longer to do it. So I'm blowing through this quickly because this is a, a long, tedious process, but it just boils down to me painting in with charcoal powder all of the darkest parts of the shadow. Now I'm going to slow down here because we're getting to the nostrils, which is, it's one of the, I think a lot of people have trouble with nostrils and the nose in general. So the way I do it is I try to get the exact shape of the nostrils and the exact placement of the nostrils first before I go on to the rest of the nose. Because if I mess up with the shape of the nostrils, I can always kind of modify that to be correct once we start modifying you know, the nose in general. But I drop that in with extra soft charcoal with kind of a light touch, and then I'll go back in with a blending stump and blend away the pencil stroke marks. Now, typically, and this isn't always the case, but typically, most portraits will have a hard edge along the top of the nostril and then a faded sort of gradient along the bottom. It just all kind of depends on the, well, it doesn't kind of depend on, it all depends on the lighting, the direction of the lighting, how hard the lights are. And usually that light is either dead on or slightly above the nose. So you can see here on our right side of his, his nose, that nostril appears bigger and it has uh, much more of a shadow that drops down and to the right. It's because the the light is slightly above his nose and to the left. And so it drops the shadows in that direction. Um, because of that, it makes a hard edge line along the top of the nostril. Then the bottom of it, as the, the nostril fades into the nose, that's where that gradient happens and that's why it looks softer there. If you can keep that in mind, you'll 90% of noses will become easy. So you, whenever we're doing the shadow along the edge of the nose, it's kind of the opposite. So along the right hand edge of the nose in this case, there's going to be kind of a hard edge. It's a little bit soft, but it's harder along the edge of the nose than it is on the uh, outside edge toward the cheek. So it kind of gives a, a small gradient it's a subtle gradient, but it, it's a gradient that goes in the direction of 
right, I believe. Yeah. So what I do is I, I start building up layers and I start working on the darkest, most prominent shadows first. And then as I go, I start uh, modifying and defining some of these, uh, meaning I add darkness, I lift away uh, charcoal in certain areas that need to be lighter for highlights. And then I start working on more subtle shadows because typically in a nose, there's going to be half a dozen layers of shadow there. There's going to be the, the main prominent one like I'm working on right now that's going to be darker. Then there will be a secondary shadow on the outside of that typically because the nose protrudes in different stages. So you've got the outside edge of the nose that protrudes just above the cheeks. Then you got the bridge of the nose that protrudes even further, and each one of those layers produces different types of shadows. So you need to be able to spot the subtleties between those shadows in order for this to look three-dimensional. So anyway, I, I typically start with the darkest shadows first, and then I work my way to the more subtle ones. And I think that a lot of art teachers would might tell you to do the opposite. They would tell you to, to do the lighter ones first and then go darker. I just always been more comfortable doing it this way. And I guess that's a big thing to keep in mind with art. There are some rules that are put in place because they're going to help you be a better artist. But I believe that if what you're doing works and you're happy with the results and your customers are happy with the results, then keep doing what you're doing. You know, try out different methods always just to, to see if they work or not. But if you're more comfortable working from starting with light and then going to dark, then by all means keep doing that. I'm, I'm just more comfortable this way. So while I've got this uh, blending stump in my hand, I'm going to go over into the eye and I'm going to start darkening, darkening up the, the area that's under his bottom eyelid. Because that, that all needs to, dark, to darken quite a bit. And this is uh, what I talk about a lot in you know this video and in the last video is that was a base layer that we started out with. And then we're going to... Um, to refine that over time. Anytime we notice that something needs to go a stage darker, we'll just jump over there real quick and do it. If we notice that we need to add in brighter highlights, we'll do that. Um, but I never really work on an area and totally finish it and then move on to the next area. I typically will put in base layers and then refine as we go along. Now, again, I want to bring this up again. Um, this is only a quick like five to seven hour drawing if we if this was a commission i would spend just a massive amount of time here i would probably spend five to seven hours just on the eyes and maybe i don't know two to three hours on the nose if this was a commission but it's not it was just a personal project just to have fun and to see how quickly i could blast out a portrait on my own without having to worry about a customer being disappointed on it. So I allowed mistakes to happen. And the whole kind of mental rules I set up for myself was do the drawing as quickly as you can, get it done, and then don't touch it. And that's one of the reasons we have flaws in this. And it's kind of one of the reasons that I did it because I knew I was going to be making a video of this. And I w it's nice to have things that we can point out at the end to say, Here's what looks off about this drawing, and here's how we can fix it so that we can acknowledge those mistakes. Now, I won't do this all the time. I'm not a big fan of putting drawings that I'm not happy with online, <laughs> but it helps keep me in line, and I think it can help other artists. So again, I'm, I'm just up here in the eyes, um, darkening up areas because since we have the nose in place, and we're dealing with much darker blacks and much, much darker grays along the edge of the nose. It's going to make the eyes look uh, soft and too light by comparison. So the reason that I'm darkening this up is because I need these, these levels and these tones and these shades to, to match. 
Otherwise, it'll look too dark in one area, way too light in another area, and then the whole thing looks two-dimensional. So up around this eyebrow, he has some folds in his skin around the forehead. And I'm just putting the most basic of those in right now, uh, just with a blending stump, just to remind myself that they exist. And we will modify those quite a bit here in a, in a little while, whenever we start adding more detail to that area. But sometimes I'll do that. I'll just throw in a couple marks where um, they kind of stick out like a sore thumb so that I know to go back into those a little bit later and modify them. So here's the Q-tip method I was mentioning earlier. Instead of charcoal powder, it's easier um, for me to have more control in this area if I use a Q-tip that has extra soft charcoal on it. So I just loaded that up um, and then I'm using a real light touch so that like for instance, if you push down too hard on this, it's gonna have a big black mark rather than a gray mark. So I'm using a light touch on there in order to put a gray, a light gray. Then if I need to go darker, I can always add more extra soft to the Q-tip or increase my pressure. Um, and then I'm just kind of taking out pencil stroke marks in the eyes and stuff like that and blending everything together with that dirty Q-tip. Then before I get you know, too entrenched in this whole area, I'm jumping right back into the nose. Now there is a strip of highlight that happens along the right hand side of his nose as you get toward the tip. So I'm leaving that blank and then I'm starting to work on the more subtle shadows around the tip of his nose. Those get, those are about half as dark or half as light. I'm not sure how to phrase that um, as the shadow that's along the right hand side of the nose. So we're now getting into areas where the shadows are going to be kind of all over the place. There's going to be dark splotches here, light splotches here, total negative space where we have highlights and we just kind of have to look at the reference photo and figure out where those go. Now I mentioned in the original, the first video that had I been intelligent, I would have converted both of these reference photos into black and white. Um, but I had already recorded these videos beforehand and I don't have the time to re-edit the videos in order to stick the black and white versions in there. Um, but if you, if you wanted to see the black and white versions, it does help you uh, tremendously whenever you're doing a portrait. I always take the collar out of a, a reference photo whenever I'm doing a drawing. Uh, so if you wanted to do that yourself, you could use Photoshop or the free, um, version which is GIMP. It's not a version of Photoshop but it's basically kind of a Photoshop clone that's freeware. Um, you can find these videos or these pictures pretty easily. Um, look for Greg Davies and look for Alex Horn. I also got the the heights wrong uh, in the last video. I was talking about the joke that's in there. Um, Greg Davies is 6'7 or 6'9 I can't remember but Alex Horn is 6'2. Um, and if you don't know what that means or you didn't catch the joke from the first video, I'm not going to re-explain it. Go watch the first video. <laughs> so maybe it'll get me an extra view. <laughs> now you can see the skin starting to come together, but it's all splotchy. We'll actually take care of that splotchiness as we go. And also keep in mind too that the cameras on here that I'm using, it, it's a bad camera. And so it's going, it tries to sharpen details and it tries to quote unquote correct the uh, tone and, and brightness and contrast, stuff like that. So it's slightly distorting this drawing. Uh, but that, that's not an excuse, but uh, what I'm saying is it's going to look splotchier in this video than what it is in real life. All right, so I've got the basic parts of the skin done. So using a B graphite pencil, or you can use um, hard charcoal here if you'd like, just use an extremely light touch. 
I'm just putting the, the beginnings of the lines in his forehead. And I want those to be real light. If you go too dark on this, it's going to look goofy and weird. It's going to look like uh, you're trying to draw a comic book version of Greg Davies. So I'm just very, very lightly putting those in. If we need to adjust the darkness of those lines, we can. But I'd rather go light first and then darken later. And then there's going to be a couple things we do with those lines too. Um, you can see now I'm adjusting the lines that happen up by his eyebrow and we're just going to kind of blow through that um, but i'm just putting in the lines by hand first then i'm going to smooth those out and then i'm going to go over the lines again with a blending stump that's got a lot of extra soft charcoal on it and then that's how i'm adjusting the darkness of the lines and the reason that i'm doing it with that is because those are not hard line shadows those are uh, soft shadows. They, they're dark, but the, the edges of them don't stop on a dime. They kind of fade out. Well, the blending stuff naturally does that. So um, now I'm going to go back in. You can see I can make a couple corrections to the eye here. And then I'm going to start darkening this area because, again, we're comparing this area to the area that we've already drawn, and it's still too light. So I'm going to darken it up just a little bit. If you look at his overall face, just in the reference photo, the right-hand side of his face, our right-hand side of his face, is way darker than the left-hand side because the light is coming from the left. And so we need to convey that in order to give it some semblance of depth and um, that 3D look. So this is really kind of for the first time I'm looking at his face overall and saying, okay, as an overall entity, as an overall piece, the right-hand side of his face in general needs to be darker and the left-hand side needs to be lighter than that. Now notice I'm not using a pencil on any of this. Um, there are no, there's no part of this area that is really defined besides the actual iris and pupil of his eye. Um, there's no real hard lines pretty much anywhere on his face. I mean, there's a little bit of a hard line where his lips meet. There's a hard line on his nostrils, but all the rest of the lines on his face are pretty soft. And you can do those with a blending stump and a Q-tip. Um, and it, it'll look more natural if you do it that way. So that's why I'm spending a lot of time around this eye using a blending stump instead of a pencil. The lines are just naturally softer because the blending stump is softer. Now I'm also taking a lot of time and care around the edge of the nose because those shadows need to be correct. They need to be correct, like in order for that nose to look real. Um, we are going to skip a little bit though. Um, I'm just doing more touch-ups around his forehead uh, just to make things a little bit darker, other things a little bit lighter, make the highlights stand out. It's nothing we haven't gone over before. If I hadn't already gone over it, I would have slowed down and explained it more, but all this can be seen in the first video. It's the same thing we've been doing through the whole thing. I am going to slow down here because this is something we haven't talked about, which is the, uh, the, the creases in his forehead. So like I mentioned a little bit ago, I'm doing this with a blending stump rather than a pencil because these lines are soft. And so I'm just kind of sketching those in and darkening them up on the right hand side. And then using that same blending stump, I'm going to start darkening up the shadows overall on the right-hand side of his face. Then the, the important part, which I think is the funnest part, is grabbing an eraser. I'm using a Tombow. You can use a kneaded or whatever you have that can do a sharp point. And I'm just starting to put uh, little dots along the highlights that happen along the right-hand side of his face. So... I'm doing that with dots because they will look like I've drawn the pores of his skin and they will also be interrupted by little mid-tone shadows between the dots which will make that shadow continue to flow through the right hand side of his face. Um, if I just erased away the highlights entirely 
it would look too splotchy. Now I'll just grab a Q-tip, blend in that side of his face again, and continue with the uh, Tombow. Now I'm going to slow down because we're going to work on his ear. And I, even though, let me rephrase this a little bit because this is weird to explain. Normally in a portrait, an ear is not that important. It, it can be done really quickly. I usually don't put much detail into them at all because they're not a focal point. And this particular one, this ear is so dark that it needs to be correct in order to set the tone for the rest of his face. It doesn't have to be hyper detailed or anything. And in fact, I pull out a lot of detail from this, or meaning I strip detail from it. But the darkness of this has to be on the money because once we get that in place, that darkness will dictate how bright or how dark his face looks as a whole. So I'm just drawing the outside edge of his ear here, and then I'm going to use just a B pencil, or you can use an H, it doesn't matter. I'm strictly doing this to, to uh, lay in the outline. Uh, this is not going to show up whenever we finish the whole ear, but I'm getting the shape right first. And I do that with graphite because if I mess up with it, um, charcoal will draw right over the top of that and make it totally disappear. Or if I draw it too large, graphite erases really easily. So I throw that in just to be safe before I jump in with, um, with charcoal. And then once I have that shape correct, then we'll go in and start blending all this stuff together, start laying in the extra soft and hard charcoal for the shadows and whatnot. And then there's a little highlight that happens along the bottom and along the uh, ridge of the inner ear up toward the top. Um, we'll, we'll lay all that in here in just a minute. Now those are done with just basic techniques. That's just the same way we did the hair, same way we did every part of every, every drawing I've ever done on these tutorials. You just lay it in with either pencil or a blending stump, either one. If you use pencil, you blend away the pencil marks with the blending stump. And so you can see here, I'm just using the blending stump to fan out that, that initial area in order to make a highlight appear. Then I'm going to load that back up with extra soft charcoal, and I'm going to start adding layers of darkness until it gets where I want it to be. Now on the outside edge of that upper ridge, I'm just skipping over a tiny, tiny bit and laying in a really dark area to the right of that, and it'll naturally create that little glint of light, that little highlight that happens along the ridge of his ear. A big rule of thumb that I use for my own personal portraits is if I can avoid using a pencil, I will. Because pencil marks, the stroke marks, are kind of difficult to get rid of in certain situations. I think overall, the lighter the pencil stroke, uh, meaning uh, like as you go from soft to harder charcoal, the harder the charcoal, the more difficult it is to blend away pencil stroke marks. With really dark, it's, it's not difficult because that's um, a softer texture. Like extra soft is more brittle and powdery than hard. And then the lighter you go with hard charcoal, number one, it makes harder lines. And two, it seems to dig into the paper a lot more. And so it's difficult to blend those away. With a blending stump, you control all of that. Um, that's why I use it a lot because you can get much, much smoother textures with that. Now this is probably the biggest tip I can give you with ears. Um, usually when there's a couple prominent highlights in the ears, I will leave those totally negative space to begin with. I'll always like do the darker shadows first and then I will leave the highlights totally white. Then if I need to add a thin layer of charcoal over the top of the, the, the highlights in order to tone it down, 
then I will. But it's better for me to leave it negative space because I can use those as landmarks to remind me where I'm at within that section. Then I can modify those later. Like that. I just kind of lightly, very lightly went over that highlight in order to take a little bit of the edge off of it. Now I mentioned in the first video that once we started laying in the skin tones and stuff, the gray hair on the edges of his head would look much whiter than what they looked before and look how much different that looks now. Because at first it, it looked way too dark, like we were putting too much charcoal on it. But compared to how dark that ear is, that hair now looks really light gray, close to white. In fact, I'm going to darken it up a little bit more. I've actually added more extra soft charcoal here so that I can darken up the inner ear quite a bit more than what I already have it. Now along the top of the ear, just to uh, have a few of those hairs that are overlapping the top part of that, I just drop those in with little sharp flicks with a Tombow eraser and it'll make it look like hairs are kind of laying over the top edge of that ear. Then using a kneaded eraser, because I can get much softer tones with this, um, I'm just adding in a few little extra highlights, softening up the charcoal just a tiny bit. If I used a Tombow on that section, the eraser marks are usually way too harsh, and the Tombow takes off charcoal um, much sharper and, and much deeper than, than a kneaded eraser will. We're going to drop in the second ear using the same method. Now this one's a lot lighter. We're just doing the same exact thing we just did except with a lighter touch. So there's not as many highlights there to, to worry about. Or there's not as many shadows there to worry about. It's, it's almost all highlights. Right now, just like we talked about before, I always look at what I've drawn compared to what I'm currently drawing and vice versa. So once I got that ear in and I, I look at the other one that I've dropped in, I noticed that the left eye is now too light. So I'm just going along uh, the top ridge of the top part of his eyelid and darkening that up just a little bit to make it stand out a bit more because it looked a little flat to me. I'm using hard charcoal here too. I don't want to use soft because if we use soft or extra soft, it's too black and it'll look like we tried to, to comic book outline this whole thing.
So this is kind of a neat little trick. I needed to soften up this area, but I don't want a big sharp highlight here. So what I do is I push a, a kneaded eraser into the area and twist. Then I grab a Q-tip. It can either be dirty or clean. It doesn't matter. And then softly blend out the edges of that. And that'll create a lifted area that makes it brighter without being sharp. So let's blow through this. I'm just adding little details with a Tombow eraser and then in working on the face the same exact way that we've been talking about through this entire video. Just making adjustments to the, the darkness and the, the lightness, working on the shadows just a tiny bit more to add uh, you know, a few of them here and there, but just refinement, that's all I was doing there. So now we're finally getting into the left side of the face. And there's a shadow that's vertical here that has sort of a V'd uh, runoff on the, the bottom right hand side. It kind of shoots out from the rest of it. So I'm just dropping that in quickly with a blending snub and then I soften that entire thing up with a Q-tip. And then softly with a loaded Q-tip I can start adding in more of these shadows and putting in the flat light gray that happens along the, the rest of his nose. Now here I grabbed a clean Q-tip because sometimes I need to soften some of this up but I don't want it to get darker. So whenever I have that and I need to blend out some super light grays, I'll just use a perfectly clean Q-tip and then as I'm scrubbing that, I will pick up the tiniest bit of charcoal off of what I've already got laid on the paper and we're just pushing light gray charcoal around the paper at that point. Typically, the more subtle the shadow, the cleaner the Q-tip I'll use. So here I'm just grabbing a Tombow eraser and adding in the tiny little highlights that happen 
along his nose and then like right between his eyebrows there's a highlight that happens that's super subtle and that I'm adding in with dots in order to pull off that same pore effect. The same one that we used on the side of his face. Also apologies that I'm not talking much today. I'm actually on a new medication that um, is notorious for giving you insomnia for the first two weeks. Uh, the thing is, I'm already a chronic insomniac, not like, oh man, I have trouble sleeping every once in a while. I mean, I actually have chronic insomnia um, as a medical condition, and so this just enhances it. So I've, I've slept basically a couple of hours each night for the past week, and I'm exhausted. I had like two hours sleep last night. So I'm kind of letting the, the, the video speak for itself when I can because I'm actually that level of tired where your voice starts to go. <laughs> it feels like you've got a sore throat. Anyway, enough complaining. Um, I'm just I'm going back over the nose and, and modifying these little shadows and these little variations in tone. And the more that I modify these, the more three-dimensional it's going to look. Um, when I pull my thumb away, look at the tip of his nose. It's starting to, to get shape to it. And the, the highlights on the very tip are really important to get, but the shadows that happen along the edge, I think are even more important because it's what helps the nose pop outward rather than just be a flat two-dimensional thing on a face that has two black dots at the end of it. I think the shadows here in this area are probably the most important shadows on pretty much the whole drawing. So I'm just taking hard charcoal here and I'm starting to do a little bit of detail work. There are a few creases by his eyebrow that I threw in and then there's in this, especially in this right eyebrow, there's a, a bunch of sections where it's way darker than the rest of the area. So I'm just defining those out and then I'm, I'm going along like the ridge of the eye and whatnot and just adding a little bit of darkness to that. So I want to blow through this because we're going to start adding in a ton of shadows and the rest of his skin with just with charcoal powder. And then we'll slow down here because I'm getting into the mouth. So what I've done is I've drawn the, where the lips meet first. And then I'm going to lay in the first layer of his mouth with a blending stump and then we'll modify that from there. The basic thing that I'm trying to get across here is the shape of his mouth first. We'll worry about tone and stuff like that later. This is, by the way, one of the two main things that I got wrong with this drawing. So the main thing that I got wrong here, which is a very easy fix, is I didn't quite make his mouth wide enough. Um, the way I made it, it, it's not much. It's like maybe a couple millimeters on each side, but changing that would have made it look a lot more like the reference photo. Um, the fix for that is whenever I get into modification here and I get into refinement, um, that's just the fix is just taking a pencil and widening out the creases in the corners of his mouth. Um, now, fortunately, this particular part doesn't change the way he looks. It just makes it look like he's pursing his lips a little bit more than what he is in the drawing. Like he's smirking in the, in the reference photo. He's smirking in that. And in the drawing part, it looks more like he's kind of pursing his lips up a little bit. But it doesn't change the way he actually looks. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the bottom lip and notice there's no depth to this at all just yet. Um, all it is is just a flat gray all the way across and then we'll end up darkening up a lot of this especially where the lips meet. His top lip is a lot darker than the bottom. Um, the corners of the mouth typically are way darker than the center and those happen on a gradient as well. And then once we get that in place and we start to get a stubble in place this is going to look a lot more like Greg especially whenever we get the um, the shadow that's along our left side cheek that really prominent smirk uh, 
crease that happens along his cheek. When we get that in place, it changes everything and starts to look way more like him. But right now, it doesn't look like much of anything. It doesn't look anywhere close to like him. So I'm just laying this in with hard charcoal. And again, if I wanted to fix this error, I could have even done it at the end of the drawing. Um, I would just extend those lines out, maybe, I don't know, two or three millimeters on each side of the corners of his mouth. Now the key to doing this correctly is everything needs to be soft. There can't be a hard line really anywhere. I mentioned earlier that there's a hard line where his, his lips meet, but even that is a little bit on the soft side. So I make sure that every pencil mark that I put in there has um, a softness to it. So it, it's not a hard edge, it's, it's got a slight fade. And then I'm gonna quickly just drop in the basic shape of that shadow that happens along his cheek, the smirk shadow. I'll end up modifying that a lot before it's all said and done. Now we're gonna blow through this pretty quick too and down on the bottom right hand side of his jawline, all right, I've made the second mistake and it is a pretty major one. Um, I end up making that way too dark and what happens is it makes his, it makes that side of his chin look like it's got, like he's got a huge jaw breaker under the skin down there. It's got, it looks like it's got a big ball and it's an easy fix, but we'll get to that whenever we uh, get to that section. So quickly, I'm just throwing in these light shadows with, um, with charcoal powder. And again, you can do this with a Q-tip with no problem. I'm just putting in a basic five o'clock shadow here, and that is, that's not even close to the end of this. All I'm doing is darkening the skin in this area, which basically is gonna represent the shadows that lie underneath his five o'clock shadow. We're gonna define that even more with a hard charcoal pencil and then a Tombow eraser in order to modify this stubble and make it look real. Right there on the right hand side, that's where I've got too much shadow and you'll notice I didn't stop it in the correct area and so even now it looks like that part of the chin has got a huge ball on it. The correction for that is pretty simple. I just move the shadow into an area where it needs to be. Um, and then pull the shadow a little bit further into his face. And that would have corrected it as well. So my first layer of putting in this stubble is with a Tombow eraser, I'm going to start laying in the highlights and the, the white hairs along that side of his face. And all I'm doing is just quickly dropping them in um, one hair at a time as fast as I can draw them with a Tombow eraser. And that's it. Nothing special there at all. Ever have one of those days where your stomach keeps growling, but you're actually not hungry? It's just growling just to be annoying. Because I've been having that all morning. Let's slow down here. This is the area that I was talking about that I got wrong. So I can do it exactly the way that I'm doing it right now, and it would be fine. But just above that area, I'll circle it on the drawing. There's a shadow that I could have laid going um, vertically that would have taken care of that bulbous section of his chin. Because in real life it doesn't look that way, but because I forgot to put that shadow in there or I didn't put it in dark enough, it makes that, that section of the drawing look like it sticks out and is too rounded. 
um, that would have been a 10 second fix at best. And even without it being a black and white reference photo, you can still see the major difference between what I'm drawing on that section of the face and the reference photo because that shadow is pretty prominent along that edge. So we're going to speed up a little bit. All I'm doing is making light marks with uh, hard charcoal, and I'm just doing that one hair at a time. Um, going back in with a blending stump when I need it to be softer. I'm going in with a pencil when I need it to be darker and sharper. And then we're going to grab a blending stump, and I'm just going over these areas on the right-hand side of his face and accentuating the highlights, just lifting off a little bit of charcoal here and there. And then the opposite, I'm going to grab a Q-tip that's got a lot of extra soft charcoal on it and start accentuating the shadows and darkening up quite a bit. While I'm doing that, though, if you look at the corners of his mouth, on the drawing compared to the reference photo you can see what I mean by the lips are too they're not they're not wide enough the lips themselves are okay but it's the corners of his mouth where the the crease happens on the edges that's where it needs to go out a little bit further the lips too I, I suppose those could be stretched a little bit further um, horizontally and it would have it would have fixed that issue Now it's pretty rare that I use graphite in my charcoal drawings, but he, he does have a few little creases on that side of his face that are super light, and I'd rather do that with graphite rather than hard charcoal, because I'd rather um, draw it too light than draw it too dark. So I just kind of add those in lightly with graphite pencil. Then I'm going back with a blending stump and a Tombow and just adjusting, adjusting, adjusting. We go back into his five o'clock shadow, and we're just modifying that a little bit. Going back up into the eyes, modifying those a little bit. This is all stuff that we've we've talked about before. Um, we're just modifying and darkening where it needs to be. Now I'm going back up into the eyebrow, and I've slowed down here because this actually kind of changes the way he looks. Those eyebrows, or at least that one looks so light compared to the rest of his face now that we have all the skin tones laid in or at least the beginnings of them laid in so i'm grabbing much more of the extra soft charcoal and putting it on with a blending stump in order to darken those whole areas up and make his eyebrows stand out a bit more the eyebrows are really important in this one whereas normally they're not um, i mean they are important in a normal portrait but they're way more important in this one because most of his expression lies in the way his eyebrows are tilted. Now we'll do to the eyes what we did to the creases on the right side of his face. We're just going over the edges of this to sharpen them up. Um, so I want the edges of his irises and his pupils to be sharper as well as like the ridges of his eyelids. I'm using uh, hard, or I'm sorry, soft graphite here, or a B graphite pencil, because I don't want with the same reason we did it with the the creases. I don't want these to be really dark. I just want them to be sharp, but not black. Okay, now one fix we are going to make though is the corners of his mouth need to be way darker. And I'm going to do that with a blending stump for the same reasons we talked about before. Um, it's just softer shadows that way. And you can tell once I start darkening this area up and defining that top lip a little bit more, his mouth starts to look a little bit more natural and more like Greg Davies instead of you know the way it was before, which is kind of more of a generic looking mouth. So before I move on to the, the rest of this thing, there are a few adjustments I need to make to his hair, and it mainly boils down to using extra soft charcoal to add some blackness to these shadows. Because right now it's a little bit too flat, 
And so I'm just putting light marks in there, then blend those out like normal with a blending stump and it'll give the hair more depth. Now I'm going to go back into the ear with the same kind of method of darkening. I'm just, I'm just adding extra soft charcoal to the really dark areas and then blending that out with a blending stump. Now when I add that along any time I do it with skin tone, I'm barely touching that, um, that pencil to the paper. Because if you do it too hard, it's going to be jet black and we don't want it jet black in that area. We're just enhancing some shadows to add a little bit of contrast. Now the other area that I could have done 
uh, some work on to fix that lower right hand part of the jaw, the chin, is that the shadow that lies in his five o'clock shadow, I brought up too high into the cheek line. I should have dropped that down way lower and then filled in the rest of the right side of his face with um, just regular overall skin shadow there and that could have taken care of that as well. And here I'm going over this with um, charcoal powder and a paintbrush which further enhances that mistake. Now the clothes I've already gone over in a quip tip video for patrons. I'm going to slow this down just enough to show you how I do the, um, the rolls in the cloth and the rest of the, the whole suit is done exactly the same way. So what I do is I put a gradient that is darker on the rolls and the edges than it is in the center. Now if you have light coming from a different direction Sometimes that light, and most of the time, the light is going to appear on the top part of the roll and then get darker along the edges of the roll where it goes into the main part of the shirt. Um, so here, the upper part of this is a little bit darker as it rolls inward toward his neck because that's where the shadows are going to be nestled. They're going to be on the inside of this. So I'm going to start out by making that darker and then I'm going to slowly fade it into the rest of the collar. And I'm going to fade it kind of quickly. I'm, I'm not going to fade it too deep into that. Otherwise, we'll cover the top part of that, which should be hitting, you know, reflecting some light. Now, right in the middle where those rolls start to happen, that's where it's going to get the darkest. So I'm just putting a very soft um, little splotch of darker gray in there to represent that shadow that's on the inward bowl type of that, that little roll of cloth. Now, you can tell since I did the top part and left that light there, you can tell as I fade into that, that's what makes it look like the cloth rolls and waves those little peaks of light that happened at the top of the rolls and the little bowl-like um, dips that, that are way darker, as long as you have those two things in the right you know, placement, it's going to look like the cloth is rolling the way it should. When we do the rest of this suit, it's the same exact thing that I'm doing here, except just the, the shirt itself is a little bit lighter than the suit and the vest. So let's go ahead and speed through this. Remember the shirt's lighter, the suit's quite a bit darker. I don't spend a ton of time on the details here uh, because it's, it's a pretty simple process. Oh, I will slow down here because I'm taking charcoal powder on a Q-tip this time because it gives me more control. Um, and I'm going to drop in the darkest thing that I can, which is along the top part of his suit. I'm going to drop in that dark area first and I'm going to start scrubbing using small circles and pulling downward. As I go down and further into the suit, it's going to get lighter and lighter. So I'm just going to do that. Um, and then continue that process, which is extremely tedious, uh, all the way across that suit. And then I'm going to grab a paper towel, fold it up, and wrap it around my fingers, and then pull straight down. And it's all those little uh, scrub marks that the Q-tip left. Those are going to disappear, and the jacket is going to get way, way lighter than what it is. But it's, it's all smoothing itself out and coming together as like a, a solid, smooth unit. So that's the base layer to this. 
What we'll do here in a second is grab extra soft charcoal and start lightly adding in more black where we want it to be darker and then blend that in. So like right here, I'm going to grab extra soft charcoal again, using small circles, not up and down motions because that will give you uh, the, the scrub marks that you're putting in here with a pencil will have direction if you go up and down and it'll look weird. This needs to be smoother. So I'm using circles. Uh, because that makes the blending much smoother and not have direction. I just have to make sure not to overlap my strokes too much here. But I'm just adding in some way darker black. And I'm not putting a ton of pressure on here either. I'm just building up layers. Then once I get down so far, I can grab a Q-tip again and blend all that together and pull that further into the jacket. Just grab a Q-tip and using the same circular motion, tiny little circles, I'm just blending all that together and pulling it down into the jacket here. Then I'll just continue that through the, the rest of the drawing. You'll see that I put a little bit of uh, more charcoal powder where I wanted it to be a little bit darker, and that was just a speed issue. I was just tired of using the Q-tip, so I tried it out with charcoal powder. Turns out it's a little bit, I don't know, it's a little bit faster to do it with charcoal powder, but it looks a little bit smoother if you do it with a Q-tip. So it's kind of up to you. It's kind of what you're patient for. Same exact process for that button-up shirt, except I just do it a little bit lighter than the rest. And I, I'm not too concerned about getting every single fold and every single detail exactly right in this, because the, the shirt and the suit are not the focal points here. They're a point of interest, but they're not a focal point. So I'm just throwing those in and not worrying about getting everything you know hyper-detailed here. Then with Alex, the hair's done just a tiny bit different. I'm kind of scrubbing that in quick because part of the joke here is that Alex is kind of an afterthought, which is funny to me because Alex, Alex actually is the guy who does Taskmaster. Like in real life, he's the actual Taskmaster. <laughs> uh, he created the show, he writes the show and all that. And in the show, he just plays kind of a sidekick. So here, making him look like an afterthought is kind of funny to me. So uh, I'm just scrubbing this in, not worried about a ton of detail here. I'm kind of keeping the direction as much as I can um, in his hair, meaning that if his hair flows up and down, I try to use up and down strokes. If it flows left or right, I use left and right strokes. So then we'll just draw Alex. Done. So... Hopefully this helped you out. Again, this was not uh, a commission. It was quick drawing. It's how I do my basic stuff. Even if I was doing this as a commission, this is still how I would do this drawing. It's just the difference would be I would take more time in a commission and then things, uh, I would let the drawing sit overnight, then come back to it and I would notice things like the bulbous part of the chin that could be corrected. Because when you look at this with fresh eyes, the next day, all the mistakes pop right out to you. So if I were to spend more time on this, the, the fix on the chin and the fix on the mouth total would probably take less than 10 minutes. But hopefully this helps you out. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And uh, if you did, uh, the like and subscribe buttons are definitely helpful. And if you haven't already, please consider the Patreon. That helps me continue making videos like this because I can't make them forever if I don't start to build an audience. Doing the best I can, and thank you so much for everybody who's already liked and subscribed and and uh, for the whole six patrons that I have. You guys are awesome. I thank you so much. Anyway, we'll see you on the next video. Thanks.